Okay, so I want to get right into this one. There was a video that recently went viral of a young person talking about the hardships of working their first nine to five job. Check it out. 7.30 and I don't get home till like 6.15 earliest. And then like, I don't have time to do anything. I don't, I want to shower, eat my dinner and go to sleep. I don't have time or energy to cook my dinner either. Being in the office nine to five, like if it was remote, you get off at five and you're home and everything's fine. But like, I'm not home. It takes me long to get home and like, like After putting this video out, she's getting dunked on all over the internet. People are saying things like, hey, a young person is finally finding out what it's like to have a job. Questioning why she's spending her time on TikTok and not trying to improve her situation. Making the standard whataboutisms about people who are from the developing world, who we assume work without complaining for some reason. But does she have a point? Is it harder for young people in America than it was 40 years ago? Or is she just a complainer? Let's dive in. Now, I'm just going to put it out there. A nine to five job sucks. They're necessary for society to function, but for those of us who have nine to five jobs, they suck. I mean, who among us hasn't fantasized about hurling the alarm clock across the room and going back to sleep? We're trading time, energy, and the opportunity cost of doing something else for money. 95% of the time, the jobs we agree to take aren't fun and we do them just so we can afford to live. So let's unpack this. The girl in the video is named Brielle and she's lamenting her commute, right? Now, I can't blame her. A long commute is like sitting through endless movie previews when all you wanna see is the main feature. For a movie that you know is probably gonna suck. Yeah, you can make the most of a commute, throw on a podcast, but you're still stuck in traffic or standing around a bunch of strangers on public transit waiting to catch a cold or prevent a stabbing from a crazy on the subway. And there you are, likely trudging to some dead-end job where your earnest efforts go unnoticed. See, most folks reasonably assume that after the grind of school, they'll launch themselves at the world. Sure, it's going to be a struggle, but there's a glimmer of hope, right? Dreams of climbing the ladder, owning a house, seizing opportunities. That's what makes the whole ordeal so damn heartbreaking. You're stuck in a job that's less a career and more a cruel joke. And to add insult to injury, you're also burning three hours a day just commuting. Good luck finding a silver lining in that mess. But hey, you just keep trudging along. It's akin to ordering a pizza only to discover the chef gave up halfway through baking it. Now you're there chomping down on a semi-raw slice because, well, you've got to eat and you've already shelled out for it. You could raise hell about the pizza, sure, but Uber Eats has turned the art of complaint into an impossible task. So in this tragically comedic scenario, that god-awful pizza is a metaphor for your life. You gotta choke it down and make the best of that doughy disaster. Swallow, swallow. God forbid you utter a word of complaint and suddenly you're branded a whiny bitch. But let's take a little trip back to the 90s. Once upon a time in the US, the house income ratio was a manageable 2.6 times. Fast forward to today and we're looking at a staggering 5.1 times house to income ratios. So if you're young and you wanna buy a house, forget it. And this situation gives landlords the green light to ring every last cent out of the rental market. Your options? Cram into a two bedroom condo with a bunch of randos or embrace the soul crushing two hour commute. Oh, and if you opt to bunker down at your folks place while navigating that commute, take solace in the fact that you're in good company. A Pew Research Center study shows that 52% of young adults in the US are back in their childhood bedrooms, a statistic we haven't seen since the Great Depression. Because who doesn't want to live their teenage years forever, right? And let's talk jobs. A good portion of employment today isn't even employment. It's gigs, freelance, no benefits, no pensions, no security. It's like being handed a parachute only to find out midair you just got a backpack. And let's not forget the internet, seemingly transforming the globe into one enormous labor market. Young Americans are now vying for jobs against folks halfway across the world, where the paycheck that barely covers avocado toast here could snag you an entire avocado plantation there. And as Americans continue to increase productivity, those wages are nearly never passed on to the worker. Of course, AI is only gonna make things much, much worse. So who's the woman in this video? Her name is Brielle Acero. She's 21 and you can find her on TikTok under the catchy name Brielle Belly 123 Okay, she's a kid, wearing her emotions on her sleeve, sometimes showing the naive thoughts of a 21-year-old trying to figure the world out. And it's hard to know what exactly she's thinking when she's making these TikToks. But still, she's built a following on TikTok with an impressive 132,000 followers and piling up an impressive 9 million likes. Maybe she's not that lazy and dumb after all. Dave Portnoy once sold Barstool Sports for $300 million, which was effectively a bunch of huge social media profiles. Mr. Beast has said he's been offered over a billion dollars for his YouTube channels. Perhaps as her following grows, she's gonna find ways to monetize it and maybe get out of that nine to five job. 
But still, not everyone can aspire to be an influencer. In a recent follow-up video on her TikTok page, Brielle shed some light on her situation. She acknowledged her fortunate post-grad job acquisition, explaining that she sent out countless applications over a five-month period before receiving an offer from her unnamed employer. The catch? The job was in New York, a place she couldn't afford to live in, forcing her to reside in New Jersey and tackle a daily commute that's an hour and a half each way. That is 15 prime awake hours of your life a week that you aren't getting back. So I get it. I can relate to this. I've been in that boat before and I know how hopeless it can feel. Now, here's the part where I get a little bit lost and she kind of contradicts herself. She laments how the pandemic induced shift to remote learning through her usual routine out of whack, making the whole nine to five gig feel like alien territory. She's griping about despising the commute, yet simultaneously blaming the absence of said commute for messing up her education. Then she makes a plea to rethink the age old nine to five slog, suggesting we need a societal overhaul. Like suddenly the entire world should just give up on all the infrastructure and economics we've built just because she doesn't enjoy her commute. I'm struggling to see how that's supposed to pan out or how tossing such a proposition out there even accomplishes anything. Nobody's stopping her from shacking up in a Costa Rican hut and playing tour guide to some French Canadian tourists who are itching to escape their resorts for a few hours. Yet still, she'd rather be a cog in this society she totally hates. Now look, if you're a person who hates their job and you have a terrible commute, I sympathize with you. I honestly do. But if I can be so bold as to give you some life advice, here it is. There's a grim reality of why nine to five jobs are a thing. Aside from those jobs that require you to physically be present, a good chunk of folks who detest their jobs need to be physically anchored to their desks or else they're gonna whittle a 40 hour work week down to a leisurely three. Of course, if they were shackled to their desks, they might only be productive for half of those 40 hours, but employers get some semblance of assurance knowing their staff aren't binge watching the Kardashians or fibbing about their output while chilling with friends. I'm not launching into a tirade about Brielle here. For all I know, she might be a dynamo in the workplace or not. Frankly, I couldn't care less. The crux of the matter is not everyone's cut out for the responsibility that comes with working from home. And if you're one of the lucky ones with a laid back boss, it wouldn't hurt to go the extra mile to prove your worth. Because rest assured, they're probably wondering just how much work you're really putting in. So if you got a good situation, embrace it. Don't take it for granted. But as for the boomers out there scoffing at Brielle, give your head a damn shake and grasp just how tough it is for young folks today who are grappling with dwindling hope. Each day they witness more knowledge jobs being outsourced or usurped by AI, stagnant salaries amidst skyrocketing living costs, and diminishing opportunities compared to yesteryears. The hope quotient for young people today? It's in free fall. What we're talking about here is stagflation. Waking up each day to a gradually declining standard of living as opportunities fail to keep pace with escalating costs. Japan's been in this rut for decades, resulting in forests that have become notorious as spots for despair-driven suicides. So go ahead and chuckle at Brielle's plight. But if you're oblivious to the hurdles her generation faces, then you have lost the plot. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know what you think in the comment section. Do you have to do a commute? What do you think of it? Do you enjoy it? Do you have a job that you hate? What's your plan to get out of it? Guys, let me know what you think in the comment section. And also, if you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. We love all the feedback we get. Thanks, everybody. So guys, we just recently launched this channel and we noticed that 99.9% .9 of our viewers are not subscribed. So if you enjoyed this video, we need your help in growing this channel. By subscribing, that would help us keep the lights on and make sure that our crews have jobs in these uncertain times. So please hit that subscribe button and we promise to make more quality videos that I'm sure you're gonna love.